All right, class, this is the post lab to the Unit 5 Atwood machine. Actually, it's a modified Atwood machine. Remember, we got this frictionless car sitting right on over here. We have a pulley with a hanging mast there. We know the card is accelerating across there because when you draw the force diagram, hey, I didn't say move yet. Um, when you draw the force diagram, it moves on over. And our biggest thing is the system that we are looking at for this situation is the cart, the string, and the hanging mass. So when you drew that force diagram, you will realize that your net force, and if you had trouble with this, go back to the force diagrams from the pre-lab, the net force is the Fg on the hanging mass by Earth. So we made that connection. We said that is going to be the net force in our situation and we are graphically and mathematically seeing how our net force by changing the net force how does it affect the acceleration so that is what we've been looking at and let's jump right into it the graph that you should have created you will notice that it is a direct proportion it is a straight line and um, yeah that's about uh, that's a good start. Um, as you increase the net force, the acceleration increases with it. The biggest thing about this lab, though, is taking a look at the slope and the y-intercept. First off, the y-intercept should make sense. It should be zero meters per second squared because without a net force, should you be accelerating? No. We learned that from last unit, so that's good. Um, however, the slope so you guys should have written up your slopes and system masses up on the board and I have an example of one um, and you will see here are the system masses hanging out right on over here and the slopes were not exactly these numbers but one thing that you have to note is there's a lot of error in our measurements here there's error because there is isn't necessarily a friction in this cart there's a lot of reasons for that and these numbers were probably really close but what I've done is I've rounded them so if you had a one kilogram mass your slope should have been about one if you had a half a kilogram of a system mass remember the system is the cart plus the hanging mass plus the string. Um, if your system was a half a kilogram, you should have gotten a slope of two. If your system was two kilograms, you should have gotten a slope of, slope of a half. And you'll start to realize what I want you to do is I want you to see how these two numbers are related together. If I had this number, is there a way that I could take our system mass, do something to it to get the slope? And you realize that there's a really nice pattern. If you haven't found it, just pause it, take a look at that, see if you can find a pattern. All right, so the pattern that we're seeing here is whatever number I have here, if I take one over that number, one over four kilograms, you realize that I get my slope value. If I had two kilograms, one over two kilograms, I get 0 0.5. So you realize if I take one over the system mass, I get my slope. So that is what the slope is representing. And people are like, how did you come up with that other than looking at this pattern? There is another way to do it, and I want us to know both, both ways, and I'm going to say let's take a look at the unit analysis. Um, the unit is a meters per second squared over a newton, and the question is what does that equal? Usually we look at a unit and we say that should make sense to us. Well, in this situation, I want you to go back to that crazy coincidence that we saw, that we saw, I always want to keep the same system, um, Sorry. Um, the situation where we have 9.8 meters per second squared, that was the acceleration due to gravity. Um, and this was the force due to gravity. And you realize that those numbers were the same for a certain reason, because they represent the same thing. So in this situation, if we cross off 9.8, because it is the same number, we have a meters per second squared over a newton per kilogram. What I can do is I can write a newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. Ladies and gentlemen, I would box that in and I would say we have now defined what a Newton is. A Newton by definition is how much um, force it takes to um, accelerate a one kilogram mass one meter per second squared. 
So that is what a newton is, a kilogram meter per second squared. And let's go back here and take a look at that and plug it in. So we have a meter per second squared over a newton, which now is a kilogram meter per second squared. And you realize something really crazy happens. Meter per second squared cancels out. Meter per second squared cancels out. And you are left with 1 over kilograms. So you realize that our unit is 1 over kilograms and look at how that links up. We said the slope is 1 over the system mass. Our unit is 1 over kilograms. So we realize the slope of the graph equals 1 over and we, we can represent it by m cis which is mass of the system. So what is so cool about this, this is the main idea of this whole entire lab. If we look at our general equation, which is equal to y equals mx plus b, our y is acceleration, our m is 1 over the system mass, and our x is our net force. So the equation that we get in this situation, if I write this out, is A equals net force over mass of the system. And that is a huge one. That is how we relate accelerations to net forces. This is the way that we take unit, oh, I don't want to do that, unit um, 3, which we studied accelerations, unit 5, or I'm sorry, unit 4 where we studied um, forces and we relate them together. This is the bridge between our two units is this equation right here. And some of you guys might be looking at that. Let me just write this another way. Um, if I take mass of the system times acceleration, I get what we call net force. Or as some of you guys may have seen it, F equals MA. As you can see, this is really deceiving. F stands for force. No, it actually stands for net force. M is not just any mass. That's the mass of the system. And acceleration, well, everyone knows acceleration. However, you notice that this, you don't know what these two things mean. So I really don't like the situation of mass, or F equals MA. I'd rather think about it like this. A equals net force over mass of the system. That is our equation. That is what we're going to use. And I want you to realize how nice it says that the acceleration causes a net force. And you can see that directly between this relationship versus this, which doesn't really say that. So that is our conclusion. Um, I will be doing another video right after this that talks about um, how to use this equation to take our unit 3 problems that we're used to and our unit 4 problems that we're used to and put them together. You'll see a nice, easy correlation between the two. Thanks for listening. We'll I'll take any questions that you might have tomorrow.